part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birdlight, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Good morning, and welcome to the Krypton Report. It's early here in Ohio, and that's how we do it. Why? Because we have children. But that's okay. You're tuned into the Krypton Report podcast. The all-Superman podcast dedicated to everything DC, talking games, news, and comics. And I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me, as always, is that smooth-talking ladies' man. That man who makes other men shiver and cry because their manliness is not sure if it's real. Mr. James Cole, the I Superman didn't. of Red. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize we were doing smooth-talking radio this morning. It's a, play, it's a player named Gus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> we've been watching a lot of psych. Oh, I say you went from good morning. I thought you were gonna do like a good morning Vietnam thing, good morning Krypton or something. And <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to, and then I was, I don't have the energy. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Krypton. Um, and then you went into smooth talking title. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be. Nah. Hey everybody. Welcome. We're here to have some fun and chat. It feels like it's been a while. Um and it hasn't. <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things because of life and a lot's happened. And in one regard, I'm going to say if you want kind of how we felt for immediate reactions, we kind of mirrored our friends over at Holy Batcast on their immediate reactions to what we're going to talk about their episode. Um, but I kind of f- glad we didn't record right away. Um, because it gave us some time to think and I actually was able to listen to some of their opinions and thoughts. So, um, I think it gave us perspective. No, honestly, the only thing I've listened to was Holy Batcast on the matter. Um, at hand, but, um, I mean, I kind of had the same reaction. That was, it was a really good, if funny, explicit episode that they dropped there. <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it definitely had given, you know, a little time to think about potentially why some of the business decisions were made. I don't know if they were like the right business decisions in regard to the, the fandom, you know, um, Mm -hmm. just everybody, all DC fans as a whole, because we've been dealing with a lot of garbage over the last 10 years, not garbage, like material, not garbage content, but just, um, like just ridiculous behavior behind the scenes and, and, um, canceled countless canceled projects and just, uh, constant changes to everything. Every single time a movie comes out, you know, there's Mm -hmm. never been a plan. And the only plan was scrapped pretty friggin' early on. Um, but yeah, I think we can, I think we can get into it a little more here as we go through all this news. So I'm going to first start off with, you know, it's always easy to start the the quicker, just kind of bullet point stuff. Uh, I did watch the milestone documentary, the milestone generations that was on HBO max. That was really good. I highly recommend anyone check that out. Um, I, um, I want to thank the good people of the Torrid for having a sale 
And I uh, purchased Jania a lovely Superman dress from Torrid. So I wanna, I'm happy about that. It's, you know, clothing and styles that she likes with the Superman symbol that I like. It's, it's a win-win situation. Yeah, so Tyler gets to win-win, wink-wink. <laughs> <laughs> I to tell my wife she looks beautiful. And then I get to have her look at me and be like, is it me or is it the dress, Tyler? And I'll be like, both. <laughs> Why can't it be both? Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm really looking forward to checking out that documentary. But, um, this week has been the, uh, this week has been the CrossFit games, um, streaming. So I've pretty much been watching that in the, the majority of the week. Nice. Yeah. I, do, I do want to say that our Super Pets review is coming. Uh, James, unfortunately, has just not had the chance to see it because of life. Um, so it will be coming shortly. We did not forget about it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, no, not at all. I, I, I very badly want to go see that. All right. So in other news. Uh, I cannot remember the character's name, so please forgive me, but the janitor that's featured in Peacemaker was spotted in the trailer for Shazam and has been confirmed to be the same character. So the character, the janitor from the uh, first episode when Peacemaker's getting out of the hospital. That's pretty kind of cool. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, Harley season three is back and it's been something. <laughs> it's been Harley Quinn. I mean, <laughs> have um, you watched the new episode? I have not watched the new one. Uh, That's why I, I say it's been <laughs> something like. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll probably get to check that out later. I, I'm sure I can squeeze that, you know, 23 minute episode in. Um. So we're going to, this, and then this will be the catalyst. So we actually have a release date for Joker 2 with Lady Gaga. And it's 10 4 Was Was the Lady Gaga confirmed or is that still just a... Um... No, that's confirmed now because oh, it was okay. actually tweeted. She actually tweeted it out, the little promo that had, it said Phoenix... And had like the silhouette of him, and then it said Gaga had silhouette of her, and it had the date oh, okay. uh, for Joker too. And she tweeted it out from her actual account. Oh well, that's cool. Um, I'm still not whole like like I'm 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 interested. Just say like it was the first Joker. I think it was I said it's like it's a great movie. To me, it's not the Joker, but it's just kind of a an elseworldish type tale. Um, so I'm yeah. in, I'm intrigued. It's not my like, Oh my God, it's the Joker. Yay. Um, I am interested just to see what they do. Yeah. You know, curiously that might be the last. No, no, because Zack Snyder's justice league came out. I was going to say that might be the last theatrical, um, DC movie that I actually bought and brought home. Oh, I, I, I still don't have the Suicide Squad on physical, and I don't have the Batman on physical. I just bought the Batman on physical, so it I was, do want to. I definitely do want to get the Batman, and I do want to have the Suicide Squad. I I just waited, and it was like twenty four dollars on sale for four K, and I bought it, and then I found it used at a store for twenty two. <laughs> but, but I was like, you know what? I got my digital copy and everything too. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so yeah, I just bought it this past week. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't see the, the Joker as like, I don't see the Joker movie as like you said, like a, like a DC film Really, you know, it's certainly not DCU, but it's definitely like Elseworlds, and it's not like it's Batman and the Joker. Um, 
I watch the movie, I own the movie, and I would watch it again. It's very well made. It's just very depressing. Um, Unless you're psychotic. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like I said, like I said before, it is a really, really good movie, but it is not a good movie. It does not make you feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, and I, you know, and as I was talking business decisions, like obviously that one's still going to go like that has the potential to make Buku profits like the first one did. I mean, it, that that movie holds records now for for the profits it made. Yeah, because it wasn't an expensive movie to make. It was lower cost. <clears throat> so now, it's a movie before we get put on streaming. <laughs> um. So now we get into like the bigger news. Flash, the Grant Gustin series, is to end after season nine. This is the current season, and this season will be abridged uh, to 13 episodes. Yeah. It that is a, I'm actually looking forward to. It is a bummer because The Flash has been such an important show to me. Um, it's been nine seasons, man. That's a good run. Um, I also say it's the show. Okay. The show is, is getting to the point now they're running out of like ideas or what to do. They're having to recycle material. Uh, they've, they've put in new side characters that nobody cares about. Um, they didn't take enough advantage of, of crisis to really reboot the universe. No, like they no. like they should have and that if they would have done that they could have injected more blood into the show um grant has been awesome it's it's you know it's just everything has an end except supernatural yeah. for some reason it didn't have an end <laughs> um, <laughs> i um i mean i i'm a couple of seasons behind on the flash so i gotta catch up so i can watch the the final season. Um, cause I definitely want to do that. Um, it lost interest. It, it lost some interest for me because like you said, it didn't take advantage of crisis and it was still grandfathered into one of those 20 plus episode seasons every season. So it just had so much filler all the time. Um, and I, that's why that's why I lost interest, you know. So the fact that it's coming back and it's going to be a 13 episode season, and they are expecting it to be the and and it's the final season, so they can plan for a finale. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I am too. And I do think okay, I do find this weird. I do find the day after the Flash premiered. Just to put things in time perspective, the day after the Flash premiere, they announce Ezra Miller is going to be the Flash in uh, BBS and Justice League. And they announced that they're going to do a Flash solo movie. It was that day they released that big DC slate that nothing came to happen. Mm -hmm. And then here we are now. The Flash will end in 2023. The same year that supposedly we'll be getting the Flash movie with Ezra Miller. I don't think it's happening a lot because like that, but it just is a weird coincidence. Yeah. Is the new company going back to that old idea that you can only have one version of these characters out there? <clears throat> we, we'll get there <laughs> because once I announce, once we get to the next news topic, it's going to be a lot of layered dial dialect. It's going to be like a Hegel's dialectic of topic. So the big point that we have here, well, I'll mention this one real quick because of what's going to happen. Uh, I saw rumors and muttering yesterday, but I still haven't, I guess got the official 
news, but it is being rumored that Gotham Knights is canceled and not happening. Um, I saw it from a couple of reliable news sources, but then I haven't seen anything more. Uh, and if it is, awesome, but we'll get there. Hmm. So here's the big news is that the anticipated Batgirl film that we are waiting for with starring Leslie Grace, JK Simmons, Michael Keaton, Brendan Frazier has been scrapped. I don't want to say canceled because it's not like it was like it's been scrapped and tossed in the trash. It's being locked in a vault to never be released to never be viewed. The completed filmed movie that's in post is being scrapped. Now, like we said, my initial reaction was I was hurt. This was done. DC and me and Warner's like, I've been such a fanboy and champing for things. Um, but then like I, I took a, like I said, I've listened to this one video that was sent to me by this uh, guy who does like a podcast, a uh, YouTube show. I'd never heard of him, uh, but my friend sent it to me. And after listening to his kind of comments, I was like, okay, I listened to Batman on film and I was like, okay, um, I'm starting to get a different perspective on this situation. I'm trying to figure out, uh, I'm trying to go back in my thing here to where I sent it to you guys. Um, uh, making sound effects is to fill time while I wait for things to load. <laughs> ciao, ciao, uh, ciao. <laughs> John Campia, Campia. I had never heard of him, but my friend sent me this and, um, uh, yeah. So before I get into a lot of things, I'm just going to let you talk because I've been talking and I'm going to take a drink of my back, uh, my Superman coffee here. I mean, I am drinking my coffee out of my justice league mug. It's actually the new 52 justice league and it still looks awesome to this day. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now the, the, Batgirl cancellation. I mean, uh, all the all the different things that were said um, that it looks bad, that um, it would tarnish the brand, um, that it's irredeemable, uh, and then that it's being written off as a tax write off. I did see something that said that they would make somewhere to 20 to $30 million as like a tax write-off or something for it. And they considered that more profitable. I mean, I, I kind of thought like if you drop that in theaters, like it's Batgirl, you're probably going to make that at, you're going to make that at least in the opening weekend, if not the opening night. Um, even if it's bad, you're going to make that, you know, you probably won't make much more than the opening weekend if it's really that bad, but still. But that's also for theatrical release. They have to spend more money because they have the to first thing it and they have to distribute it. And yeah, the first thing I read was the original budget was like 80 million and now it's bloomed to. 90 and then and it's in post and it's not done you know in post but it was being tested so it had to be you know well enough that it could be viewed and I'm, I'm just praying somebody leaks it like so we can see it um, yeah I would at this point I would probably view it and I don't suspect that it has that it needed too much um, VFX, you know? I mean, I'm sure some. Um, enough that you would still have to, that if you, if we watched it as is, it would be like... It could be something like, you know, just uh, layering fire, like CGI fire, erasing wire work. Maybe the score hasn't been written yet. 
Right. Um, it's probably farther along than that low or that um, X Men Origins Wolverine leak was years ago. <laughs> or uh, I mean, it's got to be farther along than that uh, leak of that Wonder Woman pilot where she changes her costume three times for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> But there's been a, a like, a, okay, so let's address first. People said the costume looked cheap. And you know what I said? The costume looked great. We saw spy set photos that look good. So that means that the real costume has to look good. But also, here, I, I, one scene could fix all that. Ready? Post credit scene. At the end of the movie, there's a knock at the door. Barbara opens the door. There's a box with her name on it. She opens the box. It says, every, every lady needs the perfect suit. She opens the box. We cut and we see her face. And she says, now that's a Batgirl suit. And cut to black. And yeah, we got like the um, black and gold Batgirl suit from like uh, Arkham Knight or something. Yeah. So the idea is that this suit, you know, she has on now is like a very homemade First suits, the Burnside suit, which is supposed to have a very like homemade style to it, mm-hmm. you know. So you can't tell me it's her suit looks bad, right? So. I mean, they gave they gave Batgirl, Batman gave Batgirl another suit in Harley Quinn. Like her Burnside suit is in the cabinet, is in one of the the glass um, viewing, you know. Yeah. So you and you can't tell me that now. The whole one thing is that they want this background movie was approved by the previous regime. It was approved by with the idea of going straight to HBO Max because there was a huge um, focus from the previous CEO and everything to build up their streamer. And this was going to be content created directly for HBO Max. And then the new regime wants to get back to being theatrical experiences. And that Batgirl was too expensive to be just dumped on a streamer. But not well enough to be put in theaters. So it was this weird kind of place I mean you know the interesting thing I have to say about that is Ant-Man is Ant-Man who was made into a theatrical movie yeah that's gotten two sequels a a third one coming out so well I I mean Shazam was like a, supposed to be like a ninety million, a hundred million dollar movie. Yeah, and it it looks good, you know, and it's not super epic. I mean, it is, but it's, you know, it's still small. And but okay, with Batgirl being canceled, it kills me. I think because it's not like they just started, or it was before they started. Like it was, it's done. Yeah. It's gonna be locked in a vault. And what sucks is. It was going to be, you know, because of what happens in The Flash. And it was going to have Michael Keaton's Batman. So there's one. And we were all kind of looking forward to another, where we were going with this Keaton thing. Um, Two, like I've been looking at picks, like we were going to have Jim, Jim Gordon and it was going to be J.K. Simmons. And it looked like some of the scenes are like a younger looking Gordon. Um, it was going to be set at Christmas. <laughs> uh, we, we had um, Brendan Fraser as Firefly. And it was, you know, we, we had seen pictures of the Affleck style Batmobile being there. So it's going to be this very interesting kind of world of where Batgirl is going to come from. And you can't tell me it looked bad. I mean, these directors, like I'd never seen Bad Boys for Life. I actually just picked it up from the library to watch. These directors 
gave us a very interesting, awesome pilot for Miss Marvel that made me interested in what they, we were going to see for Batgirl. So you, you can't tell me that it didn't look good. They made a, you know, I feel like they know how to make something look good. Yeah, Bad Boys for Life was a step back up, you know. Um, the first one was really good. I really enjoyed the second one, but it does have its shortcomings compared to the first one. And then Bad Boys for Life kind of brought back the brought the magic back. No, uh, maybe that's not just just the direction. Maybe that's the writing and and the the guys on screen, but direction has something to do with it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the du- the direction you, you, you're putting it all together, you know? So here's the other point. Is they want to get the DC brand on some sort of track and a plan. They want to bring prestige back. So that, one, they don't want to just release something mediocre that doesn't fall to their standards. Two, they found a way to you know, make some sort of money off because we didn't even mention, I didn't even realize they were making, they were almost done making a sequel, which was actually a prequel to Scoob, which was going to be a holiday haunts movie. And that was going to be on HBO max. Well, that bums me out because I was actually kind of excited for that when they <laughs> said it for the split second till I realized it was canceled. Because my favorite part in Scoob is the scene where there are the little kids investigating at the beginning. Right. Oh. Um, yeah, that that's that's a little sad too. I mean just just taking the axe to these streaming service things like and you know, we didn't even talk about all the original what did they what was it? Eight shows? Eight originals? Yeah, they axed. I'm not sure which which of the eight they did, but you know, I mean. But sadly, it's nothing that I've been watching. That's what. The, but and that's the thing is that's also what drives streaming services is the original content. Um. See what I what I think is interesting is why do we still have like HBO Go? Like, why is that still a thing? Yeah, I mean it's still a thing in other countries. That much I'm sure of. I don't. I'm not sure about here. And because I didn't think it was, but I saw something that talked about. Uh, and I'm not going to get into like what that supposedly they're going to. Because it was kind of confusing of what they're doing between their two. Like, cause there's Discovery Plus. So, I, I don't. I at one point thought they were going to merge the two together. As I one saw streamer. something like that as a report this week. But then I saw something that says no HBO Max is being left alone. Mm. But then I, then I saw like, I'm just like, if you merge them together, it making one streamer that has more value is, is important. Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, as it is, as it stands, like HBO Max has quickly grown to like the third biggest streamer. You know, you still have Netflix with the highest subscription base um, and it's worldwide Disney plus same thing, second highest subscription base and it's worldwide. Um, And then you have HBO max, which is expanded. um, And it's got like the third highest subscriber base. Plus uh, a lot of people out there um, debate that it has arguably the best library of of movies and television shows to watch. And I think part of that's dealing with the fact that it is HBO based because, you know, you have movies that come from other studios that go to HBO. Well, if it's on HBO, it's on HBO max. Yeah. So, so you get to see more things as it comes through HBO but you also get all of the HBO originals that, you know, they released on, on the, the channel. Um, you've got the, the endless library of Warner brothers movies that have come out for the last 80 years or whatever. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's just, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and I mean, 
if they did merge them like HBO Max and Discovery Plus, I mean, whatever kind of crazy name they decided to do there, I mean, I think that would be a tough thing to probably situate and negotiate. But I mean, over there at Disney Plus, they've got like the National Geographic channel on there. They've, yep. you know, they've got, they've got a number of things on there as well. I mean, like in other countries, they don't have Hulu, but you can watch Prey on Disney Plus. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, thought, I saw that. Um, so, you know, they, they're really, they're really utilizing that base. And it seems like the new Warner Brothers Discovery seems to be pulling away from that that base um and you know i understand that the world that people don't want the world to be locked inside your home Mm -hmm. uh and and that's you know i agree with that to an extent but also there are people who would prefer to watch these things at home um than go to a movie theater where they are surrounded by people and you never know what you're going to get. I mean, one, you know, people act like COVID is nothing anymore. And, you know, it still exists. Um, I mean, it's it's still easily transferable and it, and it still makes you sick like the flu and has dangerous potentials. Um, but yeah. people, some people don't want to go and deal with that. And then also when you go to the theater, you don't know who you're sitting around. There are people who talk, there are people on their phone, people who bring their babies and their children to movies that they shouldn't be seeing and all kinds of stuff. And it's like some people would prefer, and they just have that social anxiety that they don't want to be around that many people. It's true. So We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcast on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, the Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. So it's, it's another one of those weird things about where streamers are and what they're utilized and we're going to see here technical difficulty what it's done we will see uh you know computers (laughs) but yeah the whole like canceling Batgirl is I guess J.K. Simmons is going to be retiring from acting and this is going to be one of his last projects so we have that and Here's this is what it seems after they had that big DC shareholders meeting and everything. They're changing their they say they have a 10 year plan. They say they want to create DC studios, like really DC studios. And I'm like, okay. All right. I'm glad that they're trying to get their stuff together. They wanna they they value the brand and what it is. And I don't want to keep tarnishing it. And I'm feeling this. I don't. I don't know if they're going to rework something with Keaton in the Flash or whatever the Flash is supposed to end with. I don't think. I don't think Keaton's going to move on past the Flash. You know, um, 
I don't think that I think with the flash we might be seeing the end of something and that they're going to be looking at re re I don't want to say rebranding but changing things up. I really get the feeling that they're not going to keep trying to go backwards. They're going to move forward. I mean, they have, you know, the Batman to move forward with. I think, um, you know, that Keaton's going to be kind of done at the flash. And I think, you know, Ben is done at the flash. Like we thought, even though he's coming back for something in Aquaman, that's also because Aquaman's supposed to be out before the flash. Um, but I don't. I feel like they're just going to try to reconfigure things and bring back some sort of more consistency. And like you said, will they start the whole one version of a character? Um, I mean, I'm all about the DC films. I'm all about the um, the consistency. And taking the brand seriously. Um, Because I don't think that the previous two sets of owners did. I mean, one, we got to look at the, that this, that this third set of owners of third new set of owners of Warner brothers here and DC is cleaning up a mess that, you know, that they constantly made for themselves, you know, they made themselves, they made a mess. They, they brought in, you know, like, like Snyder was basically hand chosen by Nolan, you know what I mean? To kind of move forward, um, in the DC universe after the dark Knight trilogy. Um, so like they, they gave us this, they, they gave us people who took these characters seriously in one way or another. Um, whether it be, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy or, or the DCEU, Man of Steel and BVS. And, um, and they just kept, I don't know what they did, uh, you know, I mean, from an image, from an image that I saw of a potential scene and a, and a, and a part of script, it, really sounded like they were trying to, it it looked like they were trying to make Batgirl from the 66 show again. You know what Mm. I mean? It's like they can't get over, they can't get over what these characters used to be. Maybe I, I, I just, I don't know what the thought process is behind it because we do know that there hasn't been a plan in forever. And every time there seemed like one, they changed everything constantly. So it's just a mess. Um, So I'm all for finally like consolidating it, taking it seriously and actually doing something with it. Um, But it does, it does frustrate fans like us who, who have been supporting DC this whole time through the ups and downs through, you know, people dragging the brand through the mud for, through people who just don't care about it, who are only looking for a billion dollars. You know what I mean? Like, so I just, it's, it's it's tough to say i mean that is it is it darkest before the dawn you know what i mean like is it do things look bad right now before they actually get a plan in place and it starts to become the dc universe starts to become relevant Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because i mean we can't as dc fans it doesn't matter what we're talking about people try and like discredit the entire brand these days. Yeah. Especially if you go on Twitter, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really hard. It's really something, you know, to, to deal with. So I, uh, 
you know, that, that's what gets me like what you were saying is I'm, I'm right there with you um, in so many ways of just rebuilding that brand, rebuilding that name. And that's what they're talking about and making things, um, you know, and Batgirl is just kind of collateral to that. That's why I, I believe that. Okay, so let's just say it like this. Aquaman, I think, is safe and fine. Shazam, Black Adam, Aquaman, they're fine. I think the Flash movie's fine. Because it's... I think those... I think after that, everything is n- negotiable. <clears throat> um, I don't know if, we're, if, if we'll be looking at a Wonder Woman 3. Or, or that's done and they're just going to reboot it. Um, you know, the Black Canary, wasn't that supposed to be in Batgirl? Wasn't Journey Smollett supposed to be in Batgirl? Um, I'm trying to think if that's the rumor that was going around before. I don't know. So, um, so that's... You know, I, I believe that is, what do you call it? Um, that's gone. The Supergirl movie that we were supposed to get post-Flash, I don't know if that's going to be anything. You know? Um, the one that I'm interested in now is Blue Beetle. That one has not been brought up other than people speculating like, well, what about Blue Beetle? Because it just finished filming. And it was, you know, originally going to be an HBO Max original. And then they talked about doing it for theaters. So where does it fall? I also saw that the, the tax incentive... Uh, the thing, the the marker had passed, so there's no other things they could cancel for the tax incentives. Well, you know what? In my opinion, let's hope that Blue Beetle one tax incentive is gone, so they can't, they won't cancel that. You know, they they have to release it if they want to recoup some money from it. Um, because I mean, we we also forget that the um. <clears throat> that when they they purchased this when they purchased uh Warner Brothers that it was what was it a big loss there was a, there was like a huge debt that they had to they yeah were... yeah they they uh, they subsumed a huge debt with Warner Brothers so understandably so they're trying to guarantee some money coming in okay and that's I mean, of course, if you want to keep going, that's what you have to do. Um, but uh, hopefully the Blue Beetle has maybe enough, just enough connective tissue, maybe like Shazam or something, to be mm-hmm. relevant to the DCEU, but far enough away with a, with a, great character you know Jaime Reyes is an awesome character and his version of the Blue Beetle the Scarab the the suit is really awesome and and the behind the scenes shot before before post I mean the suit looks fantastic so you know if you want you know people people who say that the Batgirl suit looks looks too cheap and looks like crap the Blue Beetle suit is the opposite of that you know um, the Blue Beetle suit looks great, um, and I thought the Batgirl suit looked fine. You know, I I, I didn't hate it. I I liked the Burnside look. I thought she looked great. Um, I was looking forward to seeing it, and then we had Brendan Fraser. They had so much talent on that movie. That's, like, what, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what's that's crazy. The, that is the hardest part. Is like, um, is that it's done. In all the people that were 
there, you know, it's just like, ah, oh, oh, like you just, you had so much in there of people and you're just like, oh, I can't, I can't like when I stop and really think about it is what hurts. Um, but yeah, I just, I mean, I, I hope I have hopes and, and I hope that I get, that we get to see blue beetle. Um, it's sad at this point, we don't, we're not going to get to see Batgirl, but let's just keep hoping for, uh, good things to come, you know, um, black Adam, Shazam two, Aquaman two, Blue Beetle. Let's. That's that's what I'm going to be doing is trying to be positive about the stuff that we should still be getting, or that we still are getting. Yeah. Um. Speaking of which, so right now, I'm gonna say this. I don't think Titans or Doom Patrol will make it after season four. And I don't think Pennyworth will go farther than Cindy th- season three. Um, yeah, I mean, not if they're not if they're axing these projects that don't fit into an existing DCEU that they want. But that's um, the thing is, I don't even think the DCEU as is going to be like it's going to be recalibrated and tooled because they really want to work on. In that in that shareholders meeting, they talked about Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and I, I got this feeling that they they're tired of diluting their Batman brand. Um, that we have they have all these Batman, all these shows that are like around Batman, but he's not there. And I just got this idea they're going to kind of want to try to reformat things and make it more what they want is a cohesion yeah instead of having like you know this show here and this show here uh that's not really picked up steam uh it makes me wonder are they still going to do these matt reeves penguin and and arkham shows um we have not got anything for sure about the static shock film that was supposed to be being looked at that ties back because George Michael B. Jordan was supposed to be a producer on that. And then his whole Superman project probably won't see the light of day. (laughs) Um, No, I mean, if they're interested in, like they had said, you know, these properties that have languished, I mean, who has languished more than Superman? Like, and and I think that that's going to change. Um, that's going to change. And but that change is my question: is will that change affect um, Superman and Lois? Will that change affect um, this? You know the the JJ Abrams stuff that we haven't gotten. You know he had this big deal with Warner that you know, for Green Lantern and Justice League Dark and that Superman movie that they were working on. And will that ever happen? Or are they just going to cut ties with JJ (laughs) because he hasn't delivered anything yet? You know, I I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be a lot of like changing and straightening up and cutting losses to make this brand stronger. And I feel like that's, that's what we're going to see. Um, you know, what will happen to star girl after season three? Will it be the, you know, and will, because with the whole CW being sold and with this, it makes you wonder, um, where, what's going to happen. So, I'm just kind of, you know, optimistic and taking things as they come. And, you know, especially because with all the projects we've heard, they're like, oh, this is being done or this is going to happen. Well, usually it's like, well, until they start filming. (laughs) But now it's like, well, 
until I'm watching it in theaters or yeah. something, you know, like until I see the credits roll. Because they're also cutting the animation, and um, last report I saw via the Super, My Adventures with Superman and that new Batman uh, show were both still going to be produced and released. So that that's positive there. Yeah. Um, I mean, cross my fingers, like definitely. Uh, I mean, we, we need to continue having content. Um, we can't just rely on, uh, theatrical. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that bodes well. Like if you take away like the DC animated movies, that that we have that come out every year. Yeah. I think that would hurt. Yeah. You know, I know that I know I would feel the 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 brunt of that. I I love watching those things. Um I've got nearly every single one of them. Um and then like shows, kids, the cartoons, Batman, um Superman, uh Batwheels. Like we need those to continue to come out, you know. That's <laughs> That's something that, that's something if you really look over, if you look across the pond at Marvel, they don't really do anything like that. You know, their movies are general audience um, inclusive and you can take your kids to see them. And it's like, well, is that your only entry point for people is the MCU? Mm-hmm. You know, or hey, go to go to Disney Plus and you can watch everything that was made 20, 30 years ago. Like they have that new Spider Man cartoon coming, but there for a while it's like they were always rebooting like the Avengers cartoon every like two years. Yeah. But the other thing is I this sense of that they're gonna do that the like I hate saying this, okay? I hate saying this. I hate it. But I really kind of feel like Cavill's done now. Because I really feel like, in, unless, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't, I, I don't know. I just get this sense that they're going to try to reboot, in a way they're going to try to reboot the connected DC world. And make it more that general audience and then, tr- and then have movies like The Batman, where it's more of this mature, darker world Mm -hmm. and then they'll have more of this connected general audience film series as well um just just a feeling you know um because they're going to want to maximize these brands but it's yeah and it just sucks because Batgirl is going to be a really awesome female driven superhero movie um, with some great takes on some characters, very interesting take on some characters. I know that Sayla was really excited to see it and that that's what sucks is how long does it take to get this character back? You know, we can't get a decent Bat Family movie or Batman and Robin together in a movie. Um, and I'm all about now just rebooting and making a movie called Bat Family. <laughs> 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 Batman, Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing. Yeah, and we'll just and we'll kind of use the Red Hood as a plot point, and we'll just make it a Bat Family movie. I don't know. It's 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 harsh, but we could go round and round about that. But um, yeah, we'll just kind of see what how things are going. It's it's like looking to the future, but don't look too far because nothing's certain. And we'll just take you know little things as we can. <laughs> um, and the whole DC Studios things, we'll see how that pans out. Because I feel like they've tried to do that before. So, but. yeah. Well, I, I mean, have they? I don't know. Like, 
Um, they've, uh, it's been, it's, it's been a crap show over there, you know? Yeah. Like, like it was always, it was always, uh, you know, I, I don't get, I don't think that they could have done a DC studios because they changed their minds every, every time a movie came out. So you yep. got two movies a year. They change their direction every, they change their direction twice a year. Yep. Like they made the next movie do reshoots to change the next movie. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, it's just, it's been a long, long road and a pain in the butt. Yeah, it has. Um, Hope for the future. That's what I say. Let's let's continue to, you know, we we do have some things still coming, and I'm looking forward. I, I still got to see Super Pets, which I want to, and um, you know, Black Adam is still coming out in October as of yet. <laughs> Who knows if that's going to move again? Oh no, it but won't because it's coming if, out if it, in October. If they do the Rock, I'll show up like, what are you doing? Smacks yeah. ass low around, um, <laughs> but because there was a rumor, um, you know, I that they were going to announce, um, what do you call it? That they're going to move the f- uh, Shazam two and Aquaman's release dates, and I was looking for more uh, seriousness, but at the same time. I would be okay if they said move Shazam's release date because it comes out and only has like five days till Avatar comes out. Yeah. Um, And I'm just like, I I want it to succeed and do very well. Well, Um, and I think that was part of the problem with the original Shazam is they wedged it in between two event Marvel movies. Yes. Um, but oh, what was I? I mean, yeah, I saw the, I saw the uh, the potential. Like they might move these dates. At this point, at this point, until something like is a definitive reporting, breaking this is happening. Like I don't believe half of the stuff I read about DC because every time something happens something breaking happens over at DC. Every other person is writing some clickbait BS article that has no credibility whatsoever. Yes. They, they, they just, they just throw out as much BS as they can think of when something happens. And then like they get the whole freaking fandom a fandom in a stir because of it like oh what about this what about this i saw this i saw that like the people just want clicks and there's there's no integrity anymore they just want the clicks and it doesn't matter if it means if it's a real article or not it's somebody who's making a wild guess or just writing out something bs to get some to get some clicks Mm mm-hmm so these days, when unless it says breaking, I pretty much don't even read it. Because more often than not, it's somebody, like I said, doing something, creating something and talking out their butt just to get clicks on it because it's negative press against DC. And then, um, and then on the other side of the fence, they're trashing. DC and they're being offensive towards people who like DC and people who like Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. Like that's literally what you get. So like, unless it's something breaking, I don't even read it anymore. This is true. This is true. Well, you want to get into some comics or are you just too frustrated? You can't go on. 
<laughs> um. Huh. I mean, we could do comics, or did you just want to wait for Son of Kal-El this week and have a nice little four list of comics? Yeah, let's do that. The kids we'll wait are... for Son of Kal-El. We'll do action. We'll do Son of Kal-El. We'll do World's Finest and Flashpoint Beyond. Yeah. We'll do you all wanted them be- to save uh, Space Age for its own thing, right? Three oversized issues? That's what I was thinking. Um, for everyone who's like, oh, what about Space Age? Well, Space Age is supposed to be three issues. And after reading the first issue, we were talking about just doing an episode all about that whole series. Yeah. And I, I started Space Age, but I have not finished Space Age. Space Age is cool, and it did not go where I thought it was. So that's kind of where I'm like, huh. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll review it a little bit down the line. But and Yeah, I just feel like there's so much negativity going on. It's like, ah, we'll just talk about this, and then next week we'll get into something positive. <laughs> yeah. So, all maybe right. We'll from, be lucky uh, and get some good news. I'm sorry, maybe we'll be lucky and get some good news this week. Maybe. So, from us here, everybody, stay positive. Hopefully, you know this is a, uh, a, you know, it's the darkest before the dawn, right? But the dawn is coming, and this that's what this is. So, just remember. Look up in the sky. Yes, it's me. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report.